So this here is the next card that we're going to do. So we're going to shift from using just dies to using some stamps and dies. So this one here is a set that has coordinating dies. I've already cut the windows out of the card. Now, because we are using stamps and we are going to emboss, we need to use an acetate that is heat resistant. You need um, specialty acetate because regular acetate, as soon as you put the heat gun on it, it's going to start to warp. The butterflies or whatever die cut you choose, um, we don't need them for this card, so you can save that for a future project. So I've got this already um, cut. Let's move here. And I'm going to show you how to place your butterflies. I'm going to do it on this part here. So if I happen to get a little bit of the Versamark ink on here, it's not going to matter because this part here is going to be sandwiched between um, between the acetate and whatnot. So I won't see it. So I'm going to save this for the front of the card. I'm going to put my piece here into the machine. One second that right in the corner there. I want to put my acetate underneath here because I'm going to use that to stamp on. I've got a piece of media grip mat in here. It is super super thin and it helps to grip that acetate so it doesn't move around. So I use my magnets to make sure that nothing in here shifts and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this stamp in the opening and I'm just going to kind of shimmy it around and it gets to the point where that stamp goes right into that opening and you can't shimmy it anymore. So now I'm going to stick that to the top or to the top part of my stamp platform and this will work with any stamp platform you can use whichever one it doesn't need to be a specific one but you do want to make sure that you get those um, stamps precisely placed so that you can stamp precisely so that those butterflies will match their windows now for this card you may have noticed I have my card base and I have one here one layer and we're going to put the acetate between there if you want to add extra layers you can I did it with the sample card but I found you didn't really need it because I chose not to put the liquid or glossy accents or the gloss medium in here I wanted to be able to see the detail um, and the texture from the embossing so I decided only to use one layer on the top all right so once the stamps are in place I am going to move those magnets I'm just going to put a magnet down on my acetate to make sure that it doesn't move. It shouldn't. It's gripped to the media mat, but I just want to be extra sure. I'm going to close it to make sure that those magnets are not in the way of my stamps. I am going to put some Versamark on those stamps and stamp it. Make sure to press each one of the stamps to make sure you get a clear impression. And you can actually see the ink on on the acetate right here didn't stamp quite so well so I'm going to put a little bit of extra ink there and do it again if there's anything that didn't stamp you're obviously not going to get any um, embossing on it because there will be nothing for that to stick to so I'm going to lift this up here put this to the side a moment and even though you can't see the ink it is absolutely there so a piece of scrap paper beneath and let's add our embossing powder. So for this one, I'm going to use some of the liquid platinum one. Again, I just really like the color of it. Tap the excess off. Now I do have a few spots that have some embossing powder where they're not supposed to be. I'm just gonna close that up first. So there's a spot there and a spot there and really it doesn't matter because it's going to be between um, between the two layers but if you wanted to take it off just a soft brush loosen it and then you can flick it off so then it won't be there all right so now we are going to heat it and because this is heat resistant acetate it's not heat proof so it will start to warp a little bit i'm just going to keep moving my heat gun around so it's not on the same spot for very long and I just realized I had some embossing on the bottom from on my sheet here. So let's move that out of the way. seconds 
seconds to cool down. And I'm going to color the butterflies before gluing them onto the card. So this is the side that has my embossing on it. It cools down fairly quick. I'm gonna color on the opposite side. Now anything that, um, like the outside of the butterflies, is gonna be covered by our die cuts. So I don't really need to worry too much about um, staying within the lines because it's very forgiving when you've got something else that's going to cover those edges. So I can color super, super quick. If there's a line there that you don't like, just go back over with the lighter color and you can soften that a little bit, and mix that in. And I'm using Copic markers for this. It's an alcohol-based marker. It needs to be an alcohol-based marker. Marker Sharpies would work as well. You can't use a dye-based marker for this because it will not dry on the acetate. So I picked up some of that pink with my marker here when I was coloring. In order to clean it off, just go on the scrap piece of paper and just color it off and you can clean your marker off that way. Next one, let's use some yellow and then I'm going to use some orange. And the best part about using butterflies is you can color them whatever you, way you want. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love using butterfly stamps is you can be creative. There's so many different colors of butterflies that the sky's the limit. There we go. And then I'm going to use blue on this one here. I noticed when I was doing my sample that the darker, brighter colors worked best. I have some that I wanted to use, but they ended up being quite a bit lighter. So you actually didn't see the color when it was on the acetate. So keep in mind to use brighter colors so that you can see it. So once again, if you get a different color on there, it's not going to ruin your marker at all. You do want to clean it off because that would be an, not a nice surprise if you go to color something next time and you happen to have blue on here and you didn't want blue. So there we go. That is all colored and ready. And I'll see you in the next video and we'll assemble our card.